Hello, welcome to another episode of Spurverts. I am here with Emma Story. Emma, how are you? I'm all right. Yeah? Ish. Bit, bit Ish. sorrowful? Bit sorrowful. Fair enough. Craig's not here. We don't know where he is. He's probably <laughs> sunning himself in Dubai with Mika Richards again. Um, so this week we are going to be talking about Southampton sadness, uh, the Dembele factor, uh, Eric Dyer's post-match comments, the worrying and frightening race for second all of a sudden, uh, the absolute bollocks leaked Euros list, <laughs> and uh, White Hart Lane, the stadium, it's oh. over. The dream is over. However, first we're kicking off with Southampton. Uh, I was there, I believe you were there as well. Oh, it was a very, very tough and draining experience for me. Yes. What an exhausting match to watch. It was an exhausting match to watch, not least because in the shelf we were roasting what felt like 30 degree sunshine yeah. for most Christ. of the match. It was, uh, must have been hard going for them out there on the pitch. Um, yeah. yeah, well, they had that little water break, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. I didn't know what was going on there. I'm not surprised. It's it like was, it was tennis all of a sudden. It was roasting. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, God. The second half really was traumatic. Yeah. That's the word I'm going to use for it. It was traumatic. Like, when, when we took the lead, Sun scored, and I thought, yeah, do you know what? Settle down, early goal, this is going to be fine. And then... I, I'm, it's a bit like how I felt after we drew with West Brom. I'm at a loss to explain... <laughs> Yeah, the West Brom... What happened? They, played, they, played, they were playing like they were on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't there. And I don't... There were so few chances created. I... Um, oh, God. It was so so emotionally affecting on me that I actually stopped and spoke to Barnaby after the match instead of getting my head down and running to the train station like I normally do. <laughs> Bye, mate. That uh, yeah, I thought, I need <laughs> to talk bad. about this. I need some therapy here. Oh, God. Uh, Barnaby didn't help. He was equally as <laughs> downbeat <laughs> as me. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was a poor performance, wasn't it? I mean, Probably. there were so few chances. It's not even like we can go, oh, if only we'd taken... Yeah. The only one is if Harry Kane had squared it. Yeah. I understand he's going for the golden boot and Vardy had caught up two goals. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'll square it, mate. Oh. You know what I mean? And it's very hard, like, nobody wants to be critical of Harry because he's been incredible this season. And, yeah. like, it doesn't take anything away from his awesome achievements. But, yeah, you... Oh, oh. But that was it. It's not like even the draw. that Chadley one right at the end. Yeah, I mean that's the other one you could say can you force to pull off. It? I was celebrating that as soon as it fell to him. I was, oh, oh God, yeah. what a horrible match! It's, what a it, horrible it, what, match! Yeah, I mean it, it's not it's not been a good couple of weeks really. No, should Larice um, have done better for the first goal? Again, it's very difficult to criticise. Don't want to criticise so Lurice, good, yeah. but um, it wasn't his best moment. I think. I think because he's, he sets his standards so high with the kind of saves that he pulls off, I almost expected him to deal with that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess by his standards, he should have done better. By any kind of normal mortal goalkeeper standards, yeah. probably not. Um, Fair enough, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is hard. It is hard to... I mean, Southampton are a very good side and they played very well. And to be fair, like I thought earlier in the season when we played them, I you know saw them as a dangerous side, but we saw them off easily at St Mary's and I was kind of we played a lot better there we did we did we played better away all season really I mean I'm struggling to think in terms of performance level I'm not that might have been our worst game of the season mm. it, which they, is really they just hard weren't to say at the races the were they home match no is, yeah it's um it's been a t I think it's been a tough and they'll have had a tough post mortem I would have thought with uh Poch afterwards about it what a, what a horrible few weeks it's been <laughs> oh god the optimism on this channel has drained as you can probably tell and we're trying we are trying there are lots of reasons to be cheerful i mean we'll come on to those but but we all kind of do know the reason don't we that the performance we wasn't good the and reason. it's musa dembele it essentially musa dembele. it's him being missing and deli ali is something to be said for deli ali being missing but musa dembele as so, the stats don't lie the stats don't lie with dembele what is what is it that I we've not won when he's won not started centre mid haven't won this season when he's when he's not started. Oh God! Ah. And we've got we've got to play without him against Newcastle. And then for the first month of next season yeah. as well. It's, God. Yeah. I mean, it's um, he's a, the, in, the the amazing thing about Dembele, and I mean, we've kind of said it all season in terms of you've had the likes of Kane and Ali and you know Toby stealing the headlines, like everybody's been seeing their praises. I don't think actually we've given Musa as much credit as we probably should have, even on this channel. Um, he is the unsung hero of that midfield, yeah. I think. And the way everyone knows the fact that, you know, you can't take the ball off him. Yeah. Literally can't take the ball off him. Um, but I think we almost underestimate how important that skill is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Mason simply doesn't offer that. No, and how central it is to our game, particularly going forward, where, you know, they don't have to have the fear that if they lose it, that there's not going to be, obviously the same as with, as with Eric Dyer, that there's not going to be someone there behind to, to pick it up and to yeah. rescue back the possession and... 
you know, start it all over again. And, and it's obvious, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're really missing it. Uh, named the best box-to-box -box midfielder in Europe, best statistically. Best everybody. Everybody else in the whole of That's Europe. a huge loss. That's a huge loss for the six six games. Six Is six games, games fair? Oh, I thought it would be five. Right. Um, I think the, the problem is, unfortunately, there's two problems. The first problem is he clearly did it. <laughs> so yep. there, there was no, the video evidence is pretty incontrovertible. Um, secondly, unfortunately, uh, the FA, I think, was looking to make an example of somebody out of that game because, you know, as mm -hmm. it's been spoken about, it all got a bit out of control. Um, nobody wants to see some of the things that we saw. Well, yeah, nobody wants to see some of the things that we saw there. At, at yeah, if it wasn't time. Diego Costa, maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> I was quite into it. But I think, unfortunately, the FA was looking to make an example, and I think Dembele's had to bear the brunt of that. And, you know, I know that Spurs have challenged the length of the ban. I don't think that's going to make a difference. Of course um, it won't. Of course it won't. Um, I think, unfortunately, we just have to, to, to suck it up and get on with it, which is awful. Um, but I'm not, I'm not surprised. And to be honest, like, I mean, I'd be a fan of you know going at most Chelsea players, but you can't go around eye gouging people. I mean, in like in other sports, for example, like rugby, you get twelve matches mm. for that twelve weeks out. So, ugh, it's but is it's like, there something I to say that in all the images of him doing it, the linesman is looking at him, and they did see it. Yeah. And the only way they can do that charge afterwards it's is if they did, didn't. and they just because in their match report they said they didn't see it, I but mean, he is looking at it, and they she chose not to mention it the because thing, Dembele would have decked him. The thing. <laughs> The thing is, and I've actually had this conversation with quite a lot of people on Twitter, we can't incontrovertibly say that the linesman could see it. Now, we know that Clattenburg couldn't see it because he wasn't looking in the right direction. Yeah. The linesman was looking in the right direction, absolutely right. However, the only thing I would say, like, I don't know, I wasn't in his mind, could or couldn't see. But Dembele's head is in the way of right. what Dembele's doing with his hand between him and the linesman. That doesn't mean that the linesman didn't see anything. We just don't know. The point is, clearly he didn't see or is saying that he didn't see enough to be able to say, I saw that incident and flagged it up and we dealt with it. Yeah, fair enough. That's the, you know, that's the, the problem. And unfortunately, as soon as it was then published that the match officials said it, they didn't see it, we knew Dembele was going to get whacked with a big punishment because yeah. th there's literally no way around it. It's a real shame. Um, and I think, I, I, oh God, I, I hope it's going to be okay. Mm. Because I think like, next season, we need a fast start to the season, I think, because that's kind of what cost us this year. Um, it was the slow start to the season that we made. And slow start, slow end. I really hope that's not going to be <laughs> what happens at the start of next season. Good now. middle of the season for us. Yeah. Well, no, it's more than a good middle. Come on, well, let's, be, let's be more Yes, more, no, no, more no. Um, the middle is a very wide bracket yes. for me. It's I'm only, just going it's only first really four, like, last first four. First four, last four. Yeah. Or well, hopefully not the last four. We're not at the last four yet. We've not had the last game yet. Could all be fine. Oh, God. We could all be fine, come oh, on. Uh, speaking of which, can Ryan Mason do a job for us? I mean, just in general, but in that Newcastle game, but generally, is Mason yes. good enough? I, I personally, I rate Mason. I've always said this. Like, obviously, he's no Dembele, but I mean, nobody is. Um, I think alongside Dyer, I don't think there's anything wrong with that as a defensive um, mid-partnership. And you think last season, you know, he was first choice. Mm. Him and Bentaleb were there week in, week out and played really well most of the time. Like, I, I think... Yeah, we weren't in a title race oh, yeah. then. I think it's really difficult to kind Didn't of like get Champions League. to beat Mason with the Dembele stick because Dembele's kind of yeah. I know it's own. an unfair it's an unfair you know? comparison, but if we want to challenge for the league again, is Mason a good enough replacement? Because like, we've got two quality centre mids, mm -hmm. defensive centre mids, but I mean, like one of them gets injured. Yeah, I mean the problem is as well is we haven't seen enough of him this season. I would say to argue yeah. one way or the other because obviously. Uh, sentiment, you know, Dyer and Dembele have been so consistent and ever present and obviously perform so well that, you know, Premier League opportunities might, uh, Mason's been reduced mainly to Well, Mason's been rumoured to be on the way out. Bournemouth are interested, aren't they? And, yeah, uh, they are. And it's, and it's another one, Tom Carroll as well. They're talking about the fact that he'll be mm. out of contract. Um, so I yes, don't know if that you're right. therefore is laying the foundation. And Bentaleb. For, and Bentaleb. Laying the foundations for, are we looking to bring. Wanyama, Witzel. Well, We're talking Schneiderlin. Well, and, just chuck, and, chuck a random and, one and in there. there may or may not be another video coming that we can Matic. have that very discussion. Uh, fair enough. Yes. All right, Yaya Toure. Okay. Just saying, so what's people your thought play in that then? position. Uh, he's massively frustrated me in the last few weeks. There's been a few <laughs> key incidents, like that huge chance against Chelsea to go 3-1 up. Um, or in the West Brom game, uh, he got in the perfect Danny Rose crossing position where he's just like just by the touchline. Everyone was in the box. It was right near the end to win it. And uh, he just skied it. His cross just went out for a throw in. 
and Mbappe oh, was so angry. Plus, he's lost it a few times in key areas. I know Dembele occasionally does that too. Dyer occasionally does that too. Um, but they recover much better. They recover much better and are more consistent. I know it's 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 really unfair I to, think it's, yeah. to have a go at Mason, especially as he's just yeah he's not played as much, so he's not right. got in the swing of things. But also that substitution, the substitution of Mason coming on when we're two one up against a London rival mm. to try and shore things up yeah. has it's ended up being two all both times. That's so, you know, like you can't have a go at Mason for that. No. But yeah. it's just a bit a bit dodgy. Co um, coincidence or, or maybe not? Yeah, I don't know. Don't when know. does it stop being a coincidence? Well, but we'll, we'll find out, no doubt. On the, the subject of centre mids, yes. Eric Dyer's post-match comments yes. after the Southampton game. Yes. Uh, now, you found them quite revelatory. Well, I think they were quite telling. Um, he basically came out and said um, that the West Brom and the Chelsea uh, results had really hurt the team mentally. And uh, in two, I, you know, I think it shows two things. The first thing is obviously these guys really, really care. And I think we have had obviously teams previously where you kind of got the impression that maybe by this stage of the season, they've kind of gone on their holidays a little bit, not mm. necessarily always really giving it 100%. Um, I think that obviously showed that that is not the case anymore. I also think it proves how young our squad really is, the fact that two not great results can have a big effect. And I think unfortunately we have seen it against Southampton now as well. It's like we've kind of gone into a a little bit of a, a mini slump when we sort of talk so much yeah. about how we wanted the boys to kind of like, you know, keep their heads and keep their heads up and keep going. Um, and also, I think it just, it's quite nice to see a player, and he's not the first one in fairness, I think Toby's been very honest this season. It's nice to see a player be honest about not being happy mm. about a result or a set of results or the feeling in the camp. It would be easy to come out It is out good to say, see them be absolutely gutted not to have won the league. They all genuinely did believe they were going to win the league. Yeah. And that in my lifetime has never been the case. Completely. There's no way they would have been gutted. No. Not to, and it would have happened six months earlier, yeah. mathematically. So and, there's and no way no, totally. they would have. And for me, as I said, for me, I feel like it's, it's good to see how much they care. But it is a worry because I feel now if you add the Southampton defeat on top of those previous two mm. results, what is that going to do to us next week? Like, uh, uh, Poch has got a big challenge, I think. It's got to be a, it's got to be a cup final, though, right? Well, but we've been saying that for the last five. No, days but this of the now season. officially is <laughs> the last chance. It is. It is the last chance, and I mean, I guess we're. Going I am to a bit concerned <laughs> because I saw Lamella comment saying, "Oh, we only need a draw." I think, oh, you no, can't you go can't. into it thinking that. I, I mean, want three is... goals in the first two minutes, mate. I think this does kind of bring us on to our next topic. I want it? a ten nil. I want the best goal difference in the history of the Premier League. It's the battle. And it all rests on that game. It's the battle. Um, yeah, the race for second oh, is... Is now a battle. Oh, so, it's so tense. It's now a battle. It wasn't supposed How to How have we ended up in this position? How? Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, it's, um, it's a weird one. Poch made some comments, didn't he? He said... Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, I lo everyone knows how much we love Poch. Um, Poch came out and said, we have to think like a big club. Don't think about local rivalry. It's not important. Like, we just need to focus on ourselves. Almost immediately afterwards, it's like some sort of comic timing. Harry Kane then came out and said, we'd all be so gutted if we don't finish above Arsenal yeah. and all our fans <laughs> would be really gutted because we know that they deserve the bragging rights after all this time. So yeah, and then he was like, sorry, the boss said what? what, what? Yeah, no, oh, not, right, bothered, yeah no, not bothered, not bothered. Third's fine. Bothered. Yeah, That's whatever. Fine. No, we're just trying to win again. So I think Potter's got a little bit of work to do if he wants to get his. Um, yes, that's his, not uh, there yet. It's been such across. a yeah, exactly. Um, but I mean, in fairness, again, it's that same thing about them caring and really understanding the fans and understanding the connection. And like, Harry gets it. They all get it. They know what it would mean to us to yeah. finally, 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 after 21 years, be able to say we're better than you. Just, just once, it would be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, oh God, I can't even talk about it. It makes me <laughs> feel awful. The horrible uh, thing, it does bring back for me terrible memories of Lasagna Gate and the yeah. final day of the season. Yeah. And having we, been above them for a very long time and consistently better than them. And then Ten points ahead. Yeah. We oh. really want Sunderland to win. Really, really want Sunderland. Right, we're we all Sunderland New, fans now. We want now. Newcastle to have nothing to play for. Newcastle gone. Week. Yeah, Newcastle gone. Newcastle Not gone. up for it. No. What's the point? It's What's been a point? terrible season. Oh, we're really sad. Townsend's got our back. Yeah. If Will he start him, though, or they know Agent, <laughs> well, Agent they know Townsend? Agent Townsend. <laughs> He's been playing really well for them, though, recently, so I, I think know, he'll yeah. start him. But, uh, yeah, it's... 
God, he's just bound to just cut in. <laughs> and it's, for once, for that. once, he'll cut in from the right and, it'll, and smash it'll it'll on his in. left and it will, yeah, yeah it won't hit the in. crossbar or well, go it'll over. It'll just be like, remember when we played Everton at Goodison at the start of the year and Aaron Lennon scored an absolute worldie yes. like, out of nowhere. All the yeah. kind of goals that he would never score for us normally. You know that's going to happen this week. But that's fine as long as we score two. Yes, and they're both Harry Kane and he gets the golden boot. That's what we need. That's what we need. We need, yeah. Um, now, <laughs> the l supposed leaked list. Oh my god! Of the Euro squad does feature Harry Kane. Oh right? my god! Because otherwise it would be too unrealistic. <laughs> um, and it does feature Ali, and it does feature Eric Dyer. However, Rose up. and Walker are only on standby on the supposed leaked list. I mean, we know that this list is rubbish, right? It's a load of rubbish. As far as we're aware, yeah. Nathaniel Klein's name was spelt wrong on it. That doesn't necessarily mean anything, though. <laughs> yeah, that fair enough. Means somebody's a bit typo happy. Uh, fair no, enough. It's got to be rubbish. It has to be rubbish. There is utterly no way in the history of football that anybody could think it would be the right decision to take. Yes, I am going that far. Take Luke Shaw, who has not kicked yeah. the ball all season. He loves him, though. Roy Hodgson loves Rose, him. Who it is would in be the insane. Team of the year, is in the PFA team of the year. Is like the best performing fullback, arguably, mm. in the Premier season. Like, and who made, who was so sensational against Germany as well, the world yeah, champions, yeah, yeah, yeah. just in case we forget. I, I have it no would be words. absolutely insane, yeah. It I would be no insane. Words. Luke Shaw, yeah, even Luke Shaw would know this is ridiculous. Yeah. And that's nothing against Luke Shaw, who I actually really rate, but he hasn't played all season. Well, Wilshire's played seven minutes now, so of course. Oh, well, of course he's going to He can go get then. on the plane. Oh, great. Unbelievable. Brilliant. Yeah, because apparently Eric Dyer's in Wilshire's shadow, remember? According to Roy. God, pathetic. Yeah. Whatever. Hodgson. Whatever. But yeah, hopefully, I mean, squad comes out this week. Hopefully, it's all rubbish. Yeah. What or, is it? or even if it wasn't, maybe Roy will now see the public outcry and be like, yeah, yeah actually, I could have a little rethink. Look, at, look at the bloody trending topics, mate. Yeah. Danny Rose, number one. <laughs> um, White Hot Lane. Oh. It's over. I know. They've well, already like, started dismantling it. They've already it. started taking seats out. I know. I mean, it was like, it was very special on Sunday, like, from a positive point of view, regardless of what actually happened with the match, like to see, we had a real celebration for like our last game at White Hot Lane in its current state. Um, we had, you know, all the extra flags and scars, everybody wearing their colours. The team came out for their lap of honour and it was a real like, I think it was a really special moment because our stadium is just, it's so famous, it's so full of history. It's yeah. such a wonderful place to come and watch football. And then to suddenly realise, because it has kind of come out of the blue a little bit, that they suddenly went, oh, by the way, actually from next season we've got to shut part of it and this, we're going to start bringing it down. Yeah. I don't think people have quite, you know, got their heads around the fact that that really was it. And it was Yeah, it, I, I didn't to be honest. I didn't at the time I didn't hadn't really properly let it sink in. Yeah. So it was still I was sort of, sort of like it's, we'll Oh, it's just a normal match and then you go, oh no way. No. It's never going to be the same again. And it's not they have already actually started ripping the seats out in the uh northeast corner. In pictures. Yes, Good memories, yeah. though. Good memories of White Hart Lane. Oh, amazing memories. I'm talking 5 1 against Arsenal. Oh. Great memory <laughs> oh, under the floodlights. I'm talking, I mean, various recent Kane goals against Arsenal. Oh, my God. Yeah. The winning header was sensational, but the loudest I've ever heard it in White Hart Lane was the uh, to go 2 1 up this season with this that incredible season. goal. That 10 whole minutes that we were top of the league, it was just yeah. out if of If that the had world. been, the, we've said this phrase so much, but if that had been the winning goal in that match, <laughs> I think that would be the greatest goal ever scored at White Hart Lane. <laughs> yeah. It was the loudest I've ever heard it, it of like yeah. 12, 13 years of like, having a season ticket. It, it was, uh, it, it was it what was, a reaction that was. It was incredible. I was losing my mind. We were all losing our yeah. minds. And various bits of clothing, voices, yeah. all sorts of things going on there. No, it was incredible. Chucking the mask off. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, what, what a, a moment. moment. <laughs> God, it was amazing. It was amazing. Also, but the header as well, that header yeah. as well was like it erupted and that was a sensational goal, that but header. Also, if we're talking about like great memories as well, I mean, anyone who was there the night that we beat Inter Milan, the reigning European yeah. champions, 3-1, yeah. taxi for Mycon, just destroyed them. I yeah. mean, that was, I think, up until this season, I would have said that's the best atmosphere I've ever heard of White Hot Lane was that night. It mm. was just, it was like proper hair stand up on the back of your neck moment and I just remember being there going crazy and just being like I can't believe this is us this is actually our boys doing yeah it. yeah 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 exactly it was just, it was well so our, special. our boy but yeah well <laughs> hey look there was still 11 of them on the pitch <laughs> there was technically 11 of technically them on the, 11 pitch. on the pitch no it was just you know there have been so many special days and nights and you know, sometimes even the little moments, like I'm sure you guys would have seen um, at half time on Sunday, we had little Marshall come out, um, yeah. massive Tottenham fan, 
who um, had lost his legs and his arms to meningitis, never um, thought that he'd be able to come and play with his heroes, came out, had a kick about. I mean, there were grown men in absolute floods of tears watching him. I was mm. also in tears, I must admit. Um, but little things like that, like those little moments, we've had so many things that you kind of go, they're so special. And in some ways you kind of don't know if they're ever going to be repeated because new stadiums these days, they're different. They're shaped differently. They look a bit different. You know, well, I know we're doing a lot of work on how our yeah, design is going to be. Yeah, be Bigger and better stuff. And, you know, but I think it's... We'll it's, win the league at the new one. We will win the league at the new one. There we'll we go. We'll, we'll, we'll said it. We'll win we'll the league at the new we'll one. Don't know when. We will win the league at the new one. But I mean, you guys should let us know. I mean, we've given us a couple of our memories here. But yeah. um, tell us about your favourite memories of White Hot Lane. Like, there's must exactly, be yeah. I also remember the, a, a last minute four all equaliser against Arsenal at White oh, Hot Lane where yes. everyone went ballistic but yes. it's not all Arsenal yet yeah, let us know your memories in the comments uh, let us know your thoughts on the Dembele and Mason debate is it too harsh to even bother comparing them um, how did you feel after the Southampton game do you think the race for second is as worrying as we do <laughs> do you think we can do it against Newcastle uh, it's not an easy place to go uh, and what do you make of the league duo list is it a load of rubbish like we think it is uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new drop us a like and we will see you next time hi guys Barnaby for Spurred On it's Monday the morning after the night before it was actually yesterday afternoon but our 2-1 defeat at home to Southampton 